Claret TV speaking to Chelsea City manager Robbie Simpson after one 0 defeat at home to Welling this afternoon. What was your take on that one there, Robbie? It was a tough watch. I thought the game in general was just ruined by the officials. You know, the first half he just kept blowing his whistle. For any time someone appealed, he blew his whistle, and then he blew his whistle for nothing when no one appealed. It was just so stop-start. There was just no rhythm or, or fluidity to the game whatsoever, and largely the majority was down to him in the middle. And I don't know what he was on today, to be honest with you. It was it, the game itself as a spectacle was ruined by him, and then the game was decided by him. So maybe maybe that's what he wanted from today. I don't know, but it was. I feel sorry for the people that have paid money to watch that game because it was ruined by him. I feel sorry for the players that played in that game because they couldn't get any rhythm in the game because he kept blowing his whistle. Um, it was just a game ruined and decided by him and his poor decisions. Um, it's not a penalty, you know. Yes, Eddie's maybe a, a bit slow off his line, but he's. He came eventually, he's got a tip on the ball. Because he came late, he had to stretch, which meant he fell to the floor after he tipped the ball away. And as he's landed, he's landed on one of their players who stood, un stood underneath him. <laughs> what, what, what more can he do? And he's given a penalty. Listen, we, we didn't cut them open, but as soon as we, tr we we probably got in our rhythm a little bit after they scored and we played at the tempo I wanted us to. I don't think we were we were great today or played at the tempo I wanted us to, but it's hard to play at tempo whenever you try and string four or five passes together. The referee blows a whistle for a foul. It's like I say, I feel sorry for the players. Um, the way the game was refed played into their more experienced physical hands than ours. You know, we wanted a high tempo, fluid game, played on the floor, lots of passes and and the game was so stop-start, it just played into their hands, really. It allowed them time to get back into shape or get in a position where they could press us. Um, and it played played into their strengths in, in, in terms of finding their forward players um, who were big and powerful quickly. And, yeah, it was... It, it's a day to forget, really. Um, I mean, I hope I never see that referee again. I hope he's, I hope whoever's assessing him realises he's not good enough or up to the standard for this level. Yeah, and no, that... Early, uh, the, the opening goal was always going to be crucial in a game like that and they just sort of banked in I don't think they had a shot after they they scored and we were the aggressors and we, we've, had, we've had that one at the end with Callum Jones so close to an equaliser yeah um, them going them going one up again uh, I know it, the, uh, the first goal if they got it it did play into their hands because they're experienced players who um, who do the housery side of stuff really well and they were just time wasting from then on sitting in playing they had something to hold on to to try and win the game and they were going to time waste at every opportunity they were going to slow things down they were going to go down and feign injury when they weren't injured they were going to walk away from the touchline when they were going to get subbed it just played into their hands and how they how they wanted the game to go um, so yeah obviously our young lads can can learn some of that, I think, um, and get a bit better than that. But we want to be better than that. We don't want to use those kind of tactics in games. Um, I, I come back to the referee. That, that type of thing isn't a good spectacle for the people that come and pay to watch football. It's not those those kind of tactics. And the referee's got to realise that he's got a duty of care to make it an entertaining game of football to watch and. It's easily stamped out, in my opinion. You give them a warning the first time they do it. Next time they do it, you don't give them another warning and then another warning and then wait till the 90-something minute to then actually threaten to show a card. You give them a warning, then you then you card them and it's done. I don't care if it's the 60th minute you card the the goalkeeper. It, it just it eradicates it because then they're walking a, a fine line. But yeah, we listen. We got in a bit of a rhythm after their goal. We created a, a couple of chances, but it was really, like I say, it was really tough, really tough for the players. I feel for them. Yes, we could have done better, but it, it, it was just a it was just a, a non a non event game really. It, it was. There wasn't really too much for either team, and, and like I say, that was largely down to the officials. And we had a few absentees today. So obviously, there's speculation about Edwino Vaz this week. So, can you outline what's his situation now? <coughs> um, well, I'm slightly confused and um, being totally honest, I think 
me and Mickey feel really let down by Edwino. Um, listen, he, Edwino's got no legal right to work in this country. Um, so financially, we can only pay him his expenses to come here and play football. He has to play for the love of the game legally. He's got settled status in this country, but he's not got a right to work. And we're not in a position where, well, we, we've tried to help him get his right to work. We really have, and we've spoken to other clubs that have showed an interest in him or, or rang us and said, oh, the, the, we, we've heard the left back's good. And we've actually used that. And one of them's a Premier League club that I know really well. And I said, look, would you, will you be able to help him get his get his right to work in his country and and they said yeah leave it with us and and we we speak to them constantly because when he does get a right to work they might want to get him in and, and have a look at him and we we're not in a position where we we're going to say to him oh yeah don't worry we'll we'll pay you cash in hand and and hope no one finds out because not only is if someone does find out it makes the club look really really bad and you know we could get a big fine or, or I don't know what the the justice system will do in that instance but we don't want to run the risk of him getting deported. So, listen, we've done we've done ever so much for Edwino, as much as we possibly can. Um, and we did get an approach from from Barnsley. I think that's out there. There, we to for him to go up there and train. I I called Barnsley personally and said, look, we're happy for him to come up and train with you. Um, but just to let you know, this is his situation. He he cannot sign for you because of this. Um, he's got no right to work and they're not allowed to give non-contracts out in the Football League. So Edwino can't play higher than any side that can give non-contracts out. Um, they can only pay, we can, he can only earn expenses for what he does to what, what his travel and, and his boots and stuff. So he can only be reimbursed as such. And I made Barnsley aware of that, and, and they said, no, OK, yeah, we understand that, but we'd like to get him up and just to have a closer look at him. He's not the only left-back we're going to get up, but in the future, if he does have a right to work and he does impress, then we might look to do something. So I said, yeah, fine. And Barnsley were very accommodating. They said, look, we don't want to take him away from you. Um, we want it to be... We want him to carry on playing for you and and get him up in a week where you haven't got a midweek game so we can have a good look at him in for a full week's training. So we were doing that together with Barnsley. Um, and then Edwino's obviously taking advice from from someone. Um, I don't know who, because he does have an agent who I speak to and he was fully on board with what the discussions with, with us and Barnsley. But the, there's a third party who no one really knows that has got in Edwino's ear and, and told him that we're preventing him from moving on, where really we're not. We're trying our best for him, both as in a working, being a part of this country and in a footballing sense, because once he did have his national insurance number and right to work, we would help, we would bang the drum for him and, and it would look great on us if he moved higher. And I think not only that, it's football development with us from when he first came in and we've, we've taken a punt on him to now and he's still got so much to work on. Um, it's just, yeah, it's just really disappointing that we wake up in the morning and get a text message from Arduino saying I've left, um, with no real explanation, no phone call. So I feel really let down by him, really confused the whole situation that he's trying to rush things when he, he like, if he that, if he goes up to Barnsley this week, come in and does really well, and they want to sign him, they they physically can't because he's got no right to work in this country. So I'm just really confused and baffled by the whole situation. And I hope whoever is advising him is, is realising that they could be playing with someone's, with, with a kid's future, you know, because we really care about, I care about every single player in there. Me and Mickey work so hard at understanding them off the pitch as well as on. Um, and yeah, we, we just feel really let down and gutted by it, to be honest. Yeah, we've got some injuries as well with the uh, Arsh Krasnicki being trusted at Ade Lou. Is there any update on those? Yeah, well, Ade, he, he's still looking long term to us. He, like, even when he comes back now, he'll have to go through sort of like a mini pre season. So I think we're probably looking at a couple of months best for Ade. So the run in, I would say. Um, we won't, well, probably won't see him till the end of March at best, I would say. Um, Obviously, things can change, and he might wake up one morning and not feel his back, and then we'll all be very delighted. But that's the situation for him. Trotz is hopefully two weeks away. Hopefully, we'll see him two weeks today, and he'll train um, 
he'll train the Thursday before that game. Hopefully, that's best case scenario, I think, with him. <laughs> and then Arj, he's felt all, ill all week and he, he did a COVID test on Thursday and he was positive. So he's, he's feeling a lot better today. Hopefully he'll be back for Tuesday. Uh, there's Jamie Yiller as well, who's just he went off injured against Ebbsfleet, So Yeah, he went off injured against Ebbsfleet. He's progressing. Um, I think this time next week is a potential for Jamie. Um, but, but if not the game after that, I think it is, is fairly sure it should be fine. And then obviously the long term with Louis, who's, who's out for the season. And uh, back on the pitch on Tuesday night, a trip to Hungerford. We sort of need to pick back up in the league after that. We had that good win at Weymouth and then this point today. A difficult place to go on a, on a, on a midweek, Hungerford. Yeah, long trip. Um, let's say we need to go there and, and show from the start what we showed when we went 1-0 down today in terms of our energy and confidence to get on the ball and um, penetrate so we need we need to show that from the start really I don't think we showed it from the start today you know we, we, we've we've probably got a bit of a mentality that um, we're punching above our weight but I want us to start games knowing that we're in the playoffs and let's go and show everybody why we are in the playoffs and I want us to get that between now and the end of the season I really want us to show that from the start and I think we have done in quite a lot of games but we have to be relentless with it we have to have a bit of um, I don't think we've played at all with arrogance this season yet and I'd like us to do that because we've been in the playoffs all season um, so I feel like we've earned the right to be a bit arrogant and show that on the pitch and um, I want to see that Tuesday starting Tuesday I want to see that OK thanks for speaking to us Robbie and we'll speak to you again on Tuesday Cheers Ben thank you